Okay, so we're going to look at the question, um, why don't we see the gifts of the Holy Spirit um, in the church anymore? Um, kind of a lot in this, and I'm trying to make it a real simplified version. My point is not to irritate anybody or to make anybody feel, you know, like mudslinging. I'm, I'm not interested in that kind of stuff. Um, and I'm also not interested in uh, having a controversy about um, the gifts of the Spirit, like whether they're... <sighs> the different controversies, we're just going to look at the very simple question, why don't we see the gifts of the Holy Spirit in the church um, more often? So let's let's look at that. Um, first off, some places do. Um, if you've ever, ever go, gone elsewhere in the world um, or on a mission trip or something like that, it, it, it's happening all over the world. Um, sometimes we don't see it in our um, Western world or we don't see it in our... Um, in our church, and that kind of makes us think that maybe it doesn't happen anymore, but it does happen. Um, it also happens in churches in America. Um, there are still, you know, demons being cast out of, of, of people. There are still, um, now once again, there are weird things happening too, where people will claim things that aren't really real. So there is that. But there are also places where it is still happening, where people are experiencing healing. Um, I was at a camp when I was a teenager where, you know, a woman who was deaf, a girl, it was a girl who was deaf, uh, was healed. And she could, she was deaf from birth and then she could heal, she could hear. And it was just amazing to see. Um, there was a guy that I'd actually gone on mission trips with um, who had had a leg problem uh, where one was shorter than the other. And uh, uh, we, it just grew right there in front of us. Boop. And then it was even, and so I mean, they, it does still happen. The, the more important question is, why am I not seeing it in my life, in my ministry, in my church? Now that's a different question. Okay. Um, once again, I'm not interested in trying to have an argument as to defend the gifts of the Holy Spirit, or I'm I'm not interested in that. That's not what this is about. Maybe in a different video, but that's not what this is. About. So obviously, if we are not experiencing the gifts of the Holy Spirit, we need to be real and honest and realize that there is something wrong. Because if God said, if Jesus said, hey, I'm giving the Holy Spirit, and if Paul said, hey, this is this is when the Holy Spirit works, these are the kinds of things that happen, or this is the thing that happened. I, once again, not interested in that. Um, well, then if we're not having that, then obviously we need to stop and sit back and say, so what's the issue? And... That's kind of the main point that I'm trying to make. Obviously, if we're not experiencing, something is wrong. Now, I'm not trying to tear anybody down. I'm not trying to upset anybody. I'm not trying to say that your pastor is doing a poor job, or if you're the pastor, you're doing a poor job. I'm not trying to trying to cause a problem in the church. Maybe your church um, it maybe isn't ready for this, in which case um, you need to not be someone who's going on a crusade. What I mean by that is, Let's say that you read the Bible, you see the gifts of the Holy Spirit, you say, okay, I, I, I want to see this happen. And so you try to start cramming it down your church's um, throat when your church maybe even doesn't accept the gifts of the Holy Spirit or has a leadership has leadership that doesn't. Well, it's not your job to lead that church. God put that leader in charge of that church. Well, I don't think that he's doing a good job. Well, that's not really up to you. It's not your job, a Chris Song someone said, it's not your job to replace what God has put in place. And I totally agree. And so once again, I do not do not go on a crusade to, to do that. If you are the pastor and you're trying to work towards this goal, well, that's different. But, well, let me just kind of move on. Um, so the Holy Spirit is given for us to grow. And the evidence of that, the, the the result of us growing is reaching out to others. The Holy Spirit wasn't given to us for the sole purpose of tickling us and making us feel all good and going on. In fact, there's a lot of times that people think that a Holy, the Holy Spirit moved in the situation while the situation when all that happened is they felt something. Maybe a tingle down their spine. Maybe it's just they just felt good being in church. And there's nothing wrong with feeling good being in church or with having, you know... Um, the shivers or whatever, but that doesn't mean that the Holy Spirit actually did a work. Now, the Holy Spirit, once again, it's given for us to grow. Now, obviously, the Holy Spirit is given to us at the point of salvation in a measure, but the Holy Spirit can also be given in a greater degree. And, and what I mean by that is um, 
The Holy Spirit works on us. He causes us to change and to grow, but also he equips us to do certain ministries and to do certain jobs and to give certain words and that kind of stuff. So hang with me on this, okay? If we are not in a place where we are wanting to grow and we're wanting to move forward, you can almost guarantee that you're not going to see God do anything. Now, a lot of times we say that we want um, God we say that we want to grow, but then when it comes down to it, we don't actually want to grow. We don't want to change. We don't want to uh, change what we're thinking about, how we're living. We want to do all the same things and for God to just be okay with that. But that's not growth. See, there's a lot of times when people who have been in the church for 50 years are some of the biggest problems in the church. They gossip and complain. They're constantly, um, constantly opposed to the pastor. They, I mean, just so many things. I, I could make an, well, I don't know if I could make an exhaustive list, but I could make a long list. Um, and the clear evidence of us growing is that we are reaching out to others, we're seeking others, we're loving others. So if we're not willing to go to that progression, if we're not really willing to get involved in ministry, if we're not willing to. Um, seek God more and to love people more and to abandon ourselves more, then you can almost guarantee that you're not going to see the Holy Spirit move. Um, next off, the clear evidence of the Holy Spirit moving isn't tingles. I can't say this enough. The clear evidence is we are called to a greater devotion to God, to a deeper service, you know, um, uh, to love people more. The Holy, the work of the Holy Spirit is always in um, in agreement with the work of Jesus and with what the Bible says. And what does the Bible say? The Bible tells us about, for instance, the fruit of the Spirit. For instance, gentleness and kindness and that kind of stuff. So if if I claim to be speaking by the Holy Spirit and I'm just yelling at somebody and telling them all, blah, 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 well, I, I think that I might not actually be speaking by the power of the Holy Spirit. I might really be intent on what I'm saying and really believe what I'm saying and, you know, really be um, passionate about what I'm saying. But that doesn't mean it's by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit doesn't just give us the words of God. It gives us the heart of God to say those words. I remember one time um, God wanted me to say this thing. And it was a very harsh message, and I just did not want to say it. And uh, I worked myself up, and I said, okay, I'm just going to say I'm gonna, I'm gonna tear I'm going to tear this person a new one. Well... Then I waited instead of saying it. I just waited. I kept seeking after God and I kept praying. I knew what he wanted me to say, but I just stayed and prayed. And worship ended and they went into prayer and I still waited. And then they started going towards the sermon. And by the time that the pastor was ready to go to the sermon, my heart was finally right. And instead of being arrogant and prideful with the message, I gave the exact message I was going to give, said the exact same thing, but my heart was different. And that's my and that's my point. The evidence of the Holy Spirit moving and having done something in us is not going to be fits of anger, revenge, uh, violence, um, those kinds of things. That's that's not that's not what the Holy Spirit does. In fact, it, where those things exist, you can almost be guaranteed that the Holy Spirit won't be getting involved, um, because the Holy Spirit will not go where there isn't unity. He won't go where people are fighting and arguing and backbiting and gossiping. He's not interested in that. You know, if you're not willing to listen to Jesus, to obey what Jesus said, to, to read your Bible and that kind of stuff, the Holy Spirit is not going to make up the difference in your lack of commitment to God. Jesus said that the Holy Spirit would remind us of the things that God said. But if we aren't listening to God, if we aren't seeking God, and we don't really even know God, what is the Holy Spirit going to remind us of? I mean, this isn't this isn't rocket science. God, the Holy Spirit is all about unity, and where there is no unity, the Holy Spirit will not be, or it will be an imitation of the Holy Spirit. Um, also, where people are disconnected, you maybe you're not going to church, you know, whatever. Well, that pride, the Holy Spirit rejects the proud. And he accepts the humble. So if you're saying, well, they, I didn't do anything wrong. They're the ones who wronged me. You know, I'm going to hold on to this bad attitude. Well, do you really think that the Holy Spirit's going to bless you in that? And it's just not going to happen. So um, also the Holy Spirit usually only goes where he's accepted and sought after. Now, there are the exceptions, but remember that they are the exceptions, not the rule. 
the Holy Spirit goes for, so this is a two part two part at first half where he's accepted there's a lot of people who maybe just don't want more of God um, so there's that but it's not enough to just be okay with God this this brings us to the second part where you're seeking after God it's a process of seeking him um, so obviously the Holy Spirit is never under anyone's control he's not obligated to answer just because you prayed a certain thing or whatever so it's oftentimes a very long complicated process and a lot of t things have to change including ourselves and the Holy Spirit will bring us to that point. He doesn't expect us to get us there, get us there by himself, but sometimes it takes a long time. Excuse me. I, when I was a young teenager, had spoken tongues. And then there was just this long period of, of nothing. Then there was this period of me seeking God more. And then there was this period of me desiring more of God and still no more gifts of the Holy Spirit. So I kept seeking and then it brought us to the next stage where finally I started being used in, in, in giving words um, to people, words of knowledge or, or prophecy or whatever you want to call them, um, to people. And, you know, that was a different stage. And as the need required, God gave me different words and more words than at other times. Because, now remember this, the Holy Spirit does as he sees fit. He's not on a leash. He doesn't have to do what we want him to do. He gives according to what he sees fit, and he works in people according to what he sees fit. If he wants to use one person in the church every time, he will. If he doesn't want to use a certain person, he won't. It's up to him, and we don't we don't get to put a leash around the Holy Spirit and tell him, you belong to me. No, he, he makes the calls, and we say, okay. We're not here for our own glory. We're not here to get the attention on us. Look at me. I was I gave a word of prophecy. Well, the Holy Spirit's not going to be interested in that. Um, so he's never under anyone's control. And here's the thing, there's a lot of fake. And what I mean, there's multiple points I mean by this. First off, because of how much fake stuff is out there, people sometimes don't even want the Holy Spirit. Maybe they've seen something weird. Like when you walk into a church and there's a bunch of people speaking in tongues and just weird and yeah. When somebody claims that they have a word from God for you and it's just like, okay, I don't think that was from God. Yeah, you know, stuff like that where it's just a lot of weird. Then another thing, um, there's a lot of fake out there, and there's a lot of people who just accept the fake. Hey, you know what? This is good enough. And then there's a lot of fake out there in the sense that sometimes people, instead of seeking out to the Holy Spirit and praying and reading their Bibles, they say, you know what? No, I want something else. And so they start following the cult, you know, like Ouija boards and that kind of stuff. So as to have a spiritual encounter without having an encounter with God or the Holy Spirit, a more instant one. So there's a lot of fake out there, and a lot of these fake things distract us and prevent us from the Holy Spirit. See, God's not going to respond and, and, and let us feel the Holy Spirit and that kind of thing when we're when we have Ouija boards in our house, when we're watching movies that have no business being on in our house, when we're constantly making everything in our lives about our own self pleasure, when when we're ignoring the hurt and the hurting around us. The Holy Spirit's not interested in that. Now, if you're interested in growing and seeking and doing more ministry and reaching more people, you can guarantee that the Holy Spirit will be there in that. You can guarantee that. Also, a large reason why the Holy Spirit was given was for the sake of martyrdom. Well, as much as American Christians like to make themselves out like they're really, oh, woe is me, I've been so mistreated, the truth is most American Christians have it perfectly fine. And... Not allowing Bibles in school, which, first off, that's not exactly true, but let's just assume that that's the thing. That's not really persecution. Persecution isn't, oh, I'm, we're, we're no longer a Christian nation. Persecution is being mocked, losing job opportunities for the sake of the gospel. Not not for the sake of standing up, standing against um, gay relationships and that kind of stuff. I, that's a whole different let's stay on point here i'm talking about for the gospel of jesus christ and what is the good news of the gospel that that, that, that we can be saved through jesus christ that is the good news of the gospel um sometimes people think that the law is the good news and the law is not the good news um so okay um so obviously since there's no no martyrdom and here's the thing since we aren't laying down our lives not 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 physical death but laying down our lives continually for the sake of others, we're not even dying to, dying to self daily. We're living to self daily. So the Holy Spirit isn't really needed because we're not living for God. We're living for ourselves. 
the Holy Spirit is needed if we're going to do the work of God and if we're going to seek after God more and if we're going to see people saved and if we're going to impact our communities and if we're going to reach out and love people. But if we're not doing those things, then there really isn't a need for the Holy Spirit. And a lot of us have gotten real good at doing church perfect. I mean, the lights are perfect, the sound is perfect, the worship team is perfect, the pastor looks perfect. I mean, everything's just perfect. Except that it's not. I mean, the church is never, was never supposed to be about perfection. It was just supposed to be about people who are saved and loving people who are then going and reaching other people. So, obviously, because there's such a self-centered focus in American Christianity, it's, it's going to affect whether the Holy Spirit moves or not. Um, also, remember, these things are not... A, this is not an exhaustive list, and I really have tried to not be, as, be offensive as much as possible and kind of just hip-hop through this, so I, I didn't elaborate on some of those points as much as I could have, and I'll just let you draw the rest of the conclusions. Um, I will, however, tell you what happened at our church. Um, we got there, and it was chaos. There was no leadership. There was a lot of power struggles. Um, there were people who thought that the church was their own personal piggy bank, that they could just run it themselves, that they could do whatever they wanted, that they were in charge of everything, that it was their job to keep the pastor in line, that it was their job to, you know, I mean, just go down the list. It was chaos. Um, there was no leadership to speak of. Everybody just kind of did whatever was right in their own eyes. Uh, and, you know, everybody was gossiping. And here's the thing about, about it. They all used coded language um, to justify their gossip. I, I'm not gossiping. I'm just, I'm just letting them, letting them, you know, listening to their concerns and and letting them lay their head on my shoulder and I'm just being there for them. Well, that's actually called gossip. Like that's the definition of gossip. When you're talking about somebody without a good purpose, I was talking to one person and they said, "I'm not racist. I just think that white people are better." What? I, I told them, I said, you know, that's exactly the definition of racism, to think that one race is superior to another race, or a person of one color is dominant over another person of color, or of a different color, whatever. Um, I don't think that he really got what I was saying. And it's the exact same thing with gossip. People just kind of, gossip isn't that bad. Paul said that people who gossip wouldn't make it to heaven. So I think that maybe, maybe it is a big deal. Just throwing that out there. Uh, let me ask this, uh, ask this too. If somebody's struggling with homosexuality, how many of those people have you known that have torn a church in two? I will wait. Yeah. Now, how many people have you known that have torn a church apart because of gossiping? Idle talk. Constant complaining. Now there is a long list. There is a long list. So obviously the Holy Spirit wasn't working. So we took steps to move the church forward. First off, we started seeking the Holy Spirit. Wholehearted seeking. Uh, the leadership, I mean. The new leadership, not, not the old ones. The old ones were so set in their ways that they decided long ago nothing was ever going to change. And, and, you know, the church would grow and be a church instead of a country club over their dead bodies. So... You know, obviously nothing happened there. But anyways, so the, the new leadership started seeking God, but still nothing happened. So we started resolving issues, started straightening things out, establishing a structure, an authority structure. Um, we got a senior pastor in. We got associate pastors in, um, deacons or elders or whatever you want to say. Uh, then we had volunteers and, and, and lay staff. I mean, lay, the lay congregation. Um, so there you go. A clear structure. And that helped. And... But still, we weren't there yet. We started rooting out gossip, dealing, dealing with it, and constantly having sermons about it, constantly talking to people about it, constantly trying to, you see what I mean, constantly addressing the issue, and it took years, years of this. And we're finally headed in a good direction, but we're not there yet, yet obviously. Just like we, have, we are experiencing gifts of the Holy Spirit, but we're not there yet. It's not like we've attained it. Um, and we learned through this process that stuff had to happen first. And us... And in the church, the culture of the church was one of gossiping and, 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 and disunity. It wasn't one that would welcome the Holy Spirit. So that had to change. And then also, 
we realized that it wasn't, you don't just seek and then God answers and you just sit back and relax and the Holy Spirit does the rest of the work. It's a constant pursuit of seeking more than more of God. And here's the thing. It is exceptionally hard work and it's uncomfortable too. It is difficult because you have to constantly focus on the Holy Spirit. You have to constantly consider the Holy Spirit rather than your own plans. It's a lot easier to just do your own planning. Then you have to allow for the Holy Spirit to work. Instead of having every minute of the service planned, you have to be willing to do something else. You have to be willing to change things. You have to be willing to leave blank spots in the worship and in the prayer time to allow the Holy Spirit to do stuff. Because if you don't make room for the Holy Spirit, nothing will happen. It's like people say, I need to make room for the, to read my Bible. You're not going to suddenly have 25 hours in the day. You have to move your schedule around so that you'll have time in the day because you only have 24 hours. So you have to take something out if you want to put something in, and it's the exact same thing with church. If you have a church and you want to see more of the Holy Spirit, you have to take something out so you can put something in. Well, we have exactly this long. Our services are an hour and 15 minutes, which is fine. I'm not, I'm not criticizing that. You know, okay, so this is the, and, and this is how long we have for this. Then instantly this is this. Did, 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 did. Well, that's fine and everything, but if there's no room for the Holy Spirit, then people won't be actively pursuing the Holy Spirit. They won't be um, willing to be used by the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit won't move. He's not. He, he God, the Holy Spirit does things according to order, according to um, love, according to unity. Those are the, the ways that the Holy Spirit moves. He doesn't do things that bring chaos. He doesn't do things that causes anger and fits of rage or revenge. He, you can tell if somebody's not giving a word from the Holy Spirit because they'll say they'll be all, and that's just not right. Or they'll they'll say, oh well, the Holy Spirit told me to tell you this, and it's like, no, no, he didn't. Anyways, um. So stuff definitely had to happen first, and the Holy Spirit will not go in a place where he's not welcome and, and, and accepted and allowed for. I hope that this is all making sense. So obviously, not trying to step on people's feet. I'm really not trying to offend anybody, but if it's not happening, we should start asking the question, why isn't it happening? And we may not like the answer that it might be something that we're doing wrong. And... Uh, don't be a crusader. Oh my goodness. Ugh. If you are not the leader of the church, you just should not be should not be trying to take control of that. Okay? If you want are reading the Bible, you want to see more of the Holy Spirit, and so then you say, you know, I need to cram this down my church's throat so they get the no. That's not your job. You are not the leader of that church. Maybe your church is against the gifts of the Spirit. Maybe your pastor is against the Holy Spirit. That's not something, and if you cause a church conflict, then the Holy Spirit definitely will not move in that. Um, no. See, Chris Hoxton said uh, once said, um, it's not your job to replace what God has put in place. And I, I know I've said some of this stuff before, but I mean, I just have to repeat some of this stuff. I really want to make sure you guys get what I'm saying. It's it, now if you're the if you're if you're the pastor and you're working towards that goal that's fine like okay whatever but if you're not the pastor and you're trying to like shove something down your church's throat that that's just no, that's just not good that's not healthy um at all at all and so you definitely